Hey, how's it going guys? This is Dave2D and this is my review of the Lenovo Yoga 700. So there's quite a few good two-in-one devices out there to choose from, but most of them are kind of geared towards productivity or media consumption. Very few of them are capable of playing 3D games well, mostly because they don't have like a discrete GPU inside them, but this one does. Let's take a look. Okay, the laptop comes in the box protected in foam bumpers and it comes with an AC adapter. It's a pretty plain looking laptop. The entire device is encased in this black plastic and it has a very slight rubbery feel to it. It's not like your regular soft touch finish, but it has some grip to it. The bottom has the air intake vent here and the exhaust is in the back. And if you've removed some screws, you can access the internals so you can upgrade the storage drive and RAM. But keep in mind, it only has room for a single stick of RAM. Around the sides, we have a USB 2 port that doubles as the charging socket, a USB 3 port, an audio jack, and a pretty shallow SD card slot. And on the right, we have another USB 3, a mini HDMI, a volume rocker and rotation lock for the tablet mode. And there's also a recovery button to reset the device with the power button. The build quality is great. I mean, the screen is really sturdy with very little flex and the keyboard area is also really rigid, mostly because it's metal and the hinge is also very well made. It's not as cool looking as like the watch band hinge on the more expensive yogas, but it has the same positions and the build quality is fantastic. It's heavier than the Yoga 900 or the Yoga 3 Pro at three and a half pounds. And it's not super comfortable to hold one-handed for long-term use, but if you're using it while you're seated or if you're lying down, it's no problem. So this unit here has a Skylake i7 running at 2.5 gigahertz, a 14 inch 1080p screen, GTX 940M, eight gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of solid state storage, and it goes for around $900. Now there's some lower spec models without the Nvidia chip that started around $800. On the inside, the palm rest is a brushed aluminum. Now, Lenovo normally makes some of the best keyboards in the business, but I don't love this one. So the layout takes a little time to get used to. The enter key is missing that segment that makes it a little wider at the bottom, so you'll often be hitting this key instead. And key travel is a little shallow at 1.2 millimeters. It's not a bad keyboard overall. The backlighting is nice and it's not cramped, but I've come to expect really good keyboards from Lenovo, and this one's just pretty good. The texture of the plastic trackpad is a little too smooth for my liking, and the buttons need quite a bit of force to trigger, at least more than most laptops, but the tracking is good, and that's the thing. If it's responsive and it doesn't skip around, I'm good with it. The screen is a 14 inch 1080p touchscreen. It's an IPS panel, so the contrast and the viewing angles are really good, but it's not a very bright screen. It's not bad indoors, but when you're using it outdoors or just in a really bright environment, you might have a tough time with the screen, especially with that glossy finish. The color gamut is also not great. Even after calibration, the screen isn't particularly color accurate. Okay, let's talk performance. The drive speeds are pretty good. It's just like your standard high-end SATA drive and gaming performance is pretty solid for a two-in-one device. Keep in mind it's a GT940M, so it's not as powerful as your standard mid-tier gaming laptop with the 960M, but it's still very capable for light to moderately demanding games. So CSGO and MOBAs will comfortably play at medium settings. You'll hover around 50 frames per second at medium and it'll drop once in a while. So if you need to have 60 frames per second or higher, you're gonna need to run on low with everything turned off, but it's a pretty fluid gaming experience at medium. Rainbow Six Siege is a little more demanding, and depending on the map, you'll get around 55, 60 frames per second on low graphics, but only around 45 frames per second on medium settings. And if you wanna play stuff like GTA 5 or Witcher 3, yeah, this isn't that kind of laptop. Even at lowest settings and running at lowest res, it's not a comfortable gaming experience. It has a 45 watt hour battery inside and battery life isn't bad. Just remember that the screen doesn't get that bright. So I often had it at 100% brightness when I used it. Then I got around four and a half hours of regular use like browsing the web and media consumption and playing games I got a little more than an hour. Also the Lenovo devices that use these like shaped USB 2 ports for charging, they always take a long time to charge. So a full charge takes almost three hours. And the other thing is that the AC adapter is like a real estate hog at the wall. You can't use a second plug at the wall socket. The speakers are located underneath and they sound pretty average for a laptop. They have weak bass, they're not particularly loud, but they don't sound terrible. And the fans are quiet. They're silent at idle and around mid thirties on load. And the thermals are also very reasonable. Nothing uncomfortably hot, even at sustained maximum load. Okay, the Yoga 700, for $900, you get a two-in-one with excellent build quality with a plastic exterior and a metal frame, but it's a little heavy for tablet use. You get a screen that isn't very bright or color accurate, but for the price, it's not too bad. The keyboard is okay, but it doesn't live up to the Lenovo legacy. The trackpad, however, is pretty good. It doesn't miss inputs or clicks. 
Inside, the Skylake i7 and the GT940M are sufficient for most kinds of basic work, and it handles light games reasonably well. The 8 gigs of RAM and the SATA storage are really good, but upgradable if you need. And lastly, the 45 watt hour battery will last you around 4 or 5 hours of regular use. Okay, I really like the Yoga 700. It's certainly not a device that's for everyone, but for all the two-in-one devices that I've seen, this is actually one of my favorite, mostly because of that GT940 inside of it. Now, it's not the most ergonomic device when you use it as a tablet, so if your primary reason to get this thing is to use it as a tablet, like if you want it for media consumption in tablet form, or if you want to use it for work in tablet form, I wouldn't recommend this. There are probably better devices out there for you than this. But if you want to use it for just like regular computing stuff and you like to play 3D games, like light 3D games, and you want something that I can double as a tablet once in a while, this is a really cool machine. That's the end of this review. Hope you guys liked it. Thumbs if you did, subs if you loved it. It's been nice, and I'll see you guys next time.